Hi everyone, welcome to the Getting Started tutorial video for the MySQL and MariaDB integration plugin for Unreal Engine. This plugin initially was just MySQL plugin, but now this has been completely redeveloped with MariaDB library that allows you to connect to MariaDB as well as MySQL servers. You can learn more about it by visiting their official webpage, which has comprehensive documentation regarding how to set up servers, how to form SQL queries, and so on. In this video, we are going to look into the example project that has been set up for you, which allows you to quickly test the capabilities of this plugin. The project has demonstration widgets that connect to your servers, form insert and select query, and also trigger notification events, which is very useful given the database connections and query executions are completely asynchronous. So let's get started. To begin, Ensure that the plugin is correctly installed from your Epic Games Launcher. Afterward, run the example project corresponding to your specific Unreal version. Once the project is opened, do a quick run through to familiarize yourself with the plugin's functionalities. Upon launching, you'll notice this login widget. Here, you can input your server credentials and then click the login button to proceed. This operates on an asynchronous connection, ensuring that your game thread remains unblocked while the connection establishes in the background. Once successfully connected, you'll be navigated to the query widget. Here, you'll find multiple text fields already populated with sample queries. You're free to modify these if you're eager to test custom queries of your own. For insights into crafting these queries, it's recommended to consult the official MariaDB or MySQL website. They provide comprehensive guides and resources to assist you. Now, let's execute the select query. Upon executing the query, you'll observe the table populating with the results from the existing query. Proceed to delete the table and hit select once more. As anticipated, an error message appears. Let's move on to creating the table. Once the table is set up, insert some data. Then call the select function again. Instantly, you'll see the inserted results being retrieved from the server and displayed on our widget. Quite fascinating, isn't it? We are about to make some modifications to the text inputs in our insert query, and then execute the select query once again. After executing, you will notice the changes reflected in our result set. To further validate these changes, let's log into our server using MySQL Workbench. The table that we created can be displayed here. Moreover, Executing a select query unveils the data we integrated from our widget in Unreal. We have now completed a foundational demonstration of the capabilities this plugin provides. Next, we'll visit the code base of this sample project. This will provide you with a clear understanding of its inner workings, empowering you to implement it in your own projects. In this level, you'll notice the BP MySQL connection actor which plays a pivotal role in overseeing the entire database communication. It's derived from the MySQL Connection Actor class. During the begin play phase of the blueprint, I integrate the DB connection widget into the viewport. Let's delve into the widget's details. Here, you'll observe a designated area where server details and credential fields should appear. They are populated using a custom data table. This design choice facilitates the swift addition of fields and allows for easy switching between various servers or databases. The function getParamValue from widget retrieves the respective value from our data table. Observe how this function is configured. I have established this event dispatcher login to server to relay the connection parameters from this widget to the blueprint. Event dispatchers offer a streamlined method for communication among multiple blueprints, eliminating the need for redundant circular dependencies.
In our Connection Actor Blueprint, we've bound the Event Dispatcher, leveraging the past parameters to initiate a server connection through the Create New Connection function. Please note, this process runs asynchronously. This means that while the connection is being established, your game can still carry out other tasks seamlessly. I've implemented the event on connection state chained to receive notifications regarding the connection status. Upon successful connection, this event provides a unique connection ID, the connection's current status, and any potential error messages. Each connection ID is distinct, allowing for the easy tracking of multiple simultaneous server connections. For a user-friendly experience, the connection status and any error messages are then relayed to our widget, ensuring relevant feedback is displayed. Returning to the connection actor, let's delve into the subsequent steps post a successful connection establishment. Upon a successful connection, we simply introduce this basic query demo widget. But before we unravel the other nodes here, Let's first explore this widget to understand its setup. Here, you'll notice I have created a series of text input fields designated for various queries. These are primarily update queries. The Select Data button right here triggers the execution of this select query. A uniform grid panel is employed to exhibit the results of the select query in a grid view. This text field serves to display messages, be it success notifications or error alerts. Now, let's venture into the graph section. Here, a series of event dispatchers are in play. The onCallUpdate query dispatcher is activated when a query requires updating, forwarding the query as a string parameter for the update process. Conversely, the on-call update multiple queries dispatcher springs into action when several queries need updating. In this scenario, the values harvested from these text fields are relayed as arrays of strings. Here's a demonstration of how a typical query string is structured, where I am concatenating a series of comma-separated values into a string. This process is quite straightforward, especially if you are already adept at crafting SQL queries. The on-call select query dispatcher is summoned to transmit our select query to the blueprint. Let us now understand how these dispatchers are tethered within our blueprint. To execute an update query, we use the asynchronous function update data from query. This function requires two inputs, the connection ID and the query string. For select queries, we invoke the select data from query function. To update using multiple queries simultaneously, the update data from multiple queries function is available. This function accepts an array of queries to be processed concurrently. To terminate a specific database connection, simply call the close connection function and provide the relevant connection ID. To receive notifications when the status of an update query execution changes, we must implement the onQueryUpdateStatusChanged event. This event will provide us with a query ID, allowing us to track the specific query that has been updated. This feature is especially beneficial when managing multiple connections simultaneously. In our widget, we display appropriate messages to indicate whether the query executed successfully or display error messages if the query encounters any issues. Next, we delve into the event titled on query select status changed. This event introduces two unique parameters, result by column and result by row. Both are derived from the data retrieved after the successful execution of the select query. Result by column is a MySQL data table structure array. It holds the data column wise. On the other hand, result by row is a MySQL data row structure array, organizing data row wise. We pass these two parameters in out query widget. 
Within our widget, we invoke a function named populate data and pass our fetched results to it. The function takes result by column in a loop to extract column names, which are then prominently displayed as the first row in our uniform grid panel. The result by row is used to extract the data row-wise. We iterate over the structure array using a for loop. Each iteration of the loop yields a string array element, representing a row. This string is then passed to a widget that represents the text of each row item. Subsequently, this custom widget is seamlessly integrated into our uniform grid panel. This concludes the basic overview and demonstration of our example project. In the upcoming tutorial videos, we will delve deeper into the architecture of this plugin. We'll also build out some use cases from scratch to make the concepts easier to grasp and understand for you.